Praise God, praise God, praise God, our viewers. We thank God because of you. Everybody who is watching JTV and everybody who is listening to Judah Radio and everybody who is following us in the social media. Praise God, praise God. We thank God because of you. We love you very much and we honor God because of you. It's because of you that we are preaching. It's because of you that God wants you. Whichever the situation it is, that's the reason why God has sent a messenger for you to come so that you may listen to his word, so that you can acknowledge that there is an helper, there is a tower of refuge, there is a comfort in whichever the situation you are going. So that situation has come the way so that God may be glorified and God may be uplifted and exalted to, through it. So I thank God very much because of you. My name is Judith Ogege. Here where I am, it is prayer center Kisanju and we thank God because of this prayer mountain and I invite all of you to come and even pray and, and fast. I thank all our viewers we, who are watching us, especially in JTV and I thank God most of you have been coming to the mountain and when we we ask them, how did you know about us? They say they watch out from through JTV. So I thank God because of you. Many of you have come to seek God and I continue bless God because of you. Also you, if you are living around Nairobi, you are highly welcome to come to this prayer mountain. It's not far. It is just next to you and we thank God for you. So whichever part you are coming from, just come to Nairobi. Just go to a place called Railways and once you are there, you are going to board a vehicle. There are so many vehicles over there, but the commonly one is Rainbow Shuttle of Wamasa and it's going to alight you at uh, Kitengela. When you are right at Kitengela, board a vehicle also that will take you to Ki Isinya, but you are not going to reach Is Isinya. Just tell them the conductor and the driver that you are alighting at the prayer center. If you don't have a lot of lug luggages, it is going to alight you there at the prayer center. There is a there is a there is a there is a tarmac road, and in that tarmac road there there are two tiles beside it. That is our signpost, and it is painted white and maroon. So it will guide you. You'll just follow that tarmac road until where you will find a gate, a written prayer center. That is our place. But if you have a lot of luggage, then I will prefer you alight at a junction or a stage that is called Kisanju. Kisanju is the stage. Then after Kisanju is when you go to Isinya. Isinya is the last bus stop stage. That's the reason why when you are boarding a vehicle, don't say that I'm going to Kisanju. You will really look for it and you will not get it. Just say you are going to Isinya. Then a light at Kisanju, you will get a border border and you will come to prayer center. So we welcome all of you. Come, come, come. And then it is a good opportunity. We thank uh, the Lord. Most of the prayer people have been coming. I've been seeing uh, women, children, youth families. This place is a very big place. It's also a garden. It's having trees. It's a good moment also for you to bring your family and to have a good moment with your family in the Lord. You know most of the time we go with the family outings. Eh? We take nyamachoma. We do all sorts of things and it is good. There's no place that is bad and it is not seen. But also you can come with your family members. You know you can fast for, 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 for even three hours, even five hours. You just have yourself in the Lord you come, you spread the mat, eh? And with your children, you sit down, you pray, you worship. Eh? You can even run around. You know, some things are even therapy. We have here a field where people always run as they as they pray. You can even run. You can even take a bit of the of the lap, eh? and then you sit down. You thank God for the good moment. You forgive one another, and it's very nice. Eh? Even the parents now, you can let the children just run a bit here. You go in a place there. You hide. You forgive one another. It's very enjoyable. And then don't worry. Eh? Outside the prayer center here, there is a restaurant. Eh? After that, you can go there, you take a bit of tea, eh? you get some energy. You know, so mend out Germany, eh? mend out Bilagara Manyingi. And that outing is very important because you teach the children the presence of the Lord. Introduce children to the prayer mountains. Let us also, as Christians, introduce children to fasting and praying. And also, that is wonderful. Also, once in a while, they can go there, play back on bouncing castle, do all sorts of things. But also, this is a garden. It's a a very very enjoyable place i've been seeing families coming and it is very wonderful even it is good to pray as a family just come to with your husband atakama jokoka wewe mama umshawishi mwambie leo nataka kuwapeleka out ebu wasitue hiyo familia waambie nataka kuwapeleka out waoshe hiyo gari vizuri eh 
wakuje out si ndio waambie unawaleta wapi unawaleta out unawaleta out eh na uwaleta hapa prayer center waambie ndio out nilikuwa nataka mkuje na itakuwa cha furaha mtarudi nyumbani mko umebarikiwa na umepata uwepo wa Mungu then another thing that i want to tell you that if you are coming to sleep per night it is 100 shillings but per day it is free and come and have fun with Jesus Christ it's good to have fun with Jesus Christ you know most of the christian we have have this tendency or we have had this habit that we come to Jesus when we are broken we come to Jesus when we have problems we come to Jesus when we are sad we come to Jesus when we have a lot of pain that's when we come to Jesus we can also have come to Jesus and have fun just to say thank you Jesus for our family thank you Jesus for our children uh, is this the child who was in my womb is this the child who was I was crying bitter with the dear was giving birth eh who is this my husband that we are with him in the presence of the lord it doesn't matter that is a drunkard or what but the more you bring even your husband to this atmosphere and you tell your husband then stay with me with the children for a moment i'm coming back as you go to pray when you come back here you'll find your husband telling you why can't we also pray for us eh why can you teach me to pray tell him to narrate the lord's prayer for three times you see that is a progress eh he has never told you that eh? and it is a good therapy and once you go home you go home with the love of god with the joy of the lord eh you sing praises eh when you go at home you just praise and praise and praise and praise and worship you take that nice meal of yours and then children come to learn that even in the house of god there is joy you know you have teach our children that in the house of god ni sadness too at our toto tukuboja in the sunday school can you listen na teacher why do people cry a lot in church hmm? Nini hapa kanisa ni mali pa ku pa ku nini pa kulia even when they pray worship wanafunga macho because they imitate what other people are doing na unapata watoto wadogo kama four years they now start pretending they are crying they say, <laughs> because they are imitated so let us teach them that we can worship god with a smile so i thank god for all of you karibuni sana you are with me judith ogege now it is time for us to keep on praying and watching and i thank god wherever you are keeping on praying and watching and you know the word of god and prayers you cannot separate the two my friend you cannot separate you cannot pray without the word of god and you cannot even um give out the word of god without prayer these things go hand in hand they are going hand in hand they don't leave one another in any particular angle so let us just have the word of god and it is good and today we are going to learn that eh, if you do the will of god you are not going to be despised by people so if you don't want to be despised by people do the will of god You know many at times you have been saying we want favor we want to break through we want everything but if you do the will of God if you do first of all obey it and then you do it because you can obey it and then you refuse to do it it's like the child you are telling the child uh, I'm going then you wash the uten- the kitchen utensils immediately you are through with your homework and he say yes you see he have obeyed and he has responded but when you come back you find that he has not washed the utensils then there's another one who's whom you have said now I'm going when i come back i found that you have washed the baby he tells you i will not wash the baby but after you have gone he sit down and sat and say mm, why well, let me just wash the baby the baby you find that this child has washed the baby who is the who who obeyed and who did the will of the parent is this the one who said i will do and he did not do or the one who said i will not do and then he changed his mind and he did it this one who said that i will not do and he did it is better than the one who said i will do and will not do it so let us learn to do the will of god if you do the will of god you are not going to be despised and let us read the word of god from the book of malachi chapter 2 verse 9 malachi chapter 2 verse 9 and say so i so i in turn will make the people of israel despise you because you do not obey my will and when you teach my people you do not treat everyone alike now god is saying so i in turn will make the people of israel despise you and who is he talking about when you read the book of malachi chapter 2 you will find that the lord is talking about the priest the lord is anointed with the priest and he's saying that he is going he is going to make the people of israelites despise his servants despise his people despise his priest despise his royal generation why and say you do not obey my will and when you teach my people you do not treat everyone alike first of all we do not obey his will and when we teach the people we do not treat everybody alike there are some things we say it's sin there are some things we decorate we don't say that is sin there are some things we tell people oh ni maroni madhabau we don't tell them it is sin 
It is sin. You, you, let me tell you, why are these things bounding us still? These things bound us still because we have not reached in the latter of giving ourselves away to God and willing to do away with the things that hold us. Remember, Abraham. Abraham came from a family which was, they were moon worshippers. They were idol worshippers. They did not worship God. They did not worship Yahweh. But God saw the level of obedience in Abraham. He was pleased with Abraham. Abraham did not fast and, play, and pray and tell God, God, choose me. Choose me so that I'll be the father of nation. Choose me so that you may have many descendants, as many as the stars on the sky. He did not tell God to choose him. Despite the fact that he was in the family where people were moon worshippers, he was obedient. God was just happy because in the level of obedience, he could see the way Abraham was obedient to his parent. He could see the way Abraham was obedient even to his wife. He could see the way husband uh, Abraham was obedient to the staff. He could see the way even Abraham was obedient to that priest and also obedient to that God. So he was just pleased because of obedience. The obedience of Abraham was coming genuinely. And then when God appeared to Abraham, because he was a person who always obeyed, God knew that even if Abraham does not know me, but because of the grace of obedience that is in him and the fear of just obeying and respecting any uh, supernatural being, I'm very sure when I call Abraham, among all these people, Abraham will be the one who will obey and listen and follow me because he's obedient to any supernatural being. He's obedient to any divine being and he has acknowledged divine being. And that's the reason why when God appeared to Abraham in the, in the dream, he did not hesitate. He did not even ask who you are. You see, Moses is asking who you are. And when they, they sent me, who am I going to say? But Abraham is not even asking who you are because it's just the, his level of obedience is high. And he remember, he's coming from an idol-worshipping family. And remember, eh, in that family, there's no even priest. There's no anything that Abraham has do, but he have just pleased God with the level of obedience. And God appeared to Abraham and tell Abraham, leave, and Abraham leave, without even inquiring, who are you? Where are you taking me? Abraham is just living because of, obe of obedience. And this obedience made Abraham to make a covenant, made God to make a covenant with Abraham. Abraham did not ask God to make a covenant with him, but he was pleased with Abraham because the moment he revealed himself to Abraham, the moment he declared the promise to Abraham, Abraham did not turn again to the moon worshiping God. He knew that this is a real God and he decided to love God with all his heart. And that's the reason why he was just delivered through obedience. So, why are you being followed by the altars in your father's house? Because you are still listening to them and you are still serving them, even when you are still in the house of the Lord. Even me, I've really struggled with the altars of my father's house because I was still listening to them. I, my heart was not yet fully to the Christ. My heart was still having some holes. My heart was still having some potholes. My heart was still hold hostage. I, I have not given, you see, I've given my life to Christ, but my heart, I have not given it to Christ. You see, I've given myself to Christ. I'm born again. I'm going to church. I go to Kesha. Um, I am in present worship team. I'm very active by the grace of God. But you see, I've given my, 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 some part of my, me, I've given to God. But the most important part that God wants me to give, I have not given it to God. So you see, the, the, the demons in my father's house still have legal right over me. And they could still oppress me so much. And yet I am in the house of the Lord. They could still oppress me more than you could ever imagine. You, you could go to church the whole night, pray, but I'm still under oppression. There's nothing that is coming forth in me. I am just feeling rejection. I'm just rejected every now and then. Those oppression, you see. But the moment now I gave God my heart, you see, I, you know you can give God your life, but you can, you can deny God some part of your life, which God wants, which God loves most. He says that he examined the mind and the heart. You see, he examined the mind and the heart, not even the, the hand. Because when the mind and the heart is all right, then all other parts of the body will be all right and it will obey the word of God. So I thank God for that. So that's the reason why God is rebuking this priest and telling them, so I, I, in turn, will make the people of Israel despise you because you do not obey my will. And when you teach my people, you do not treat everyone alike. We do not treat everyone alike. So sin is sin. There's no more sin than the other sin. Sin is sin. And once you have sinned, you should be told that this is not right. The word of God should rebuke you. And he's saying very well. 
So I, I in turn will make the people of Israel despise you because you do not obey my will. First of all, we do not obey your, the will of God. If you do not obey the will of God, people will despise you. And now let us now give out ex three examples with our daily life. And you see, let me tell you one thing. In the place that you are working, if God have told you to come out of that place, that means that the grace of being in that place have ended. If you continue being in that place, people will despise you. Because the grace that was attracting you towards people is no longer there. People will despise you. You will feel dis uh, discouraged. You will feel rejected. It is always important to go with the will of the Lord. The veneration which is appointed time. Though it's legal, it will not be proof false. Wait for it. You see, when you start planting a church and it is not your time to plant the church. Yes, God have already spoke about it. You have even been given the grace about it. But there are so many things that you have to undergo so that that thing will come to pass. So if you want to jump and start, there will be no grace. You will plant a church there, but you will be frustrated. Within three months, you will close your church. Why? Because you are not willing, you are not moving with the will of God. And people will despise you. People will not come. Mark you, let me tell you things. Whether you like it or not. It is God who always at, at bring people to you, whether you like it or not. Despite everything we do, it is God who always bring pull people towards us. God can pull someone from Middle East to come because of me. And it is God who have connected and it is God who have pushed this person. This person will be allocated and this person will find me. And if I'm in the right position with the Lord, this person will find me. Because where God is telling this person is going to meet me, if I'm in the right position with the Lord, I will not move. But if I'm not doing the will of God, you see, God has already um, or commanded a blessing from Middle East to come and allocate me. And then the blessing is coming. The blessing is finding that I'm not there. And you see, the blessing cannot go back. Anybody who is there will get that blessing. And yet the blessing was made to be mine. Why? I'm being despised because I am not moving with the will of God. It is very, very good to do the will of God. Another example, let me tell you, when you are in the will of God, you will do what is right. When you are in the will of God, you will be kind, you will be patient, you will be generous. The joy of the Lord will be in you despite the pain, despite the suffering. First of all, Remember what happened immediately when messengers are coming to bring a message to Job that your children have died. One thing Job does, he bowed down and worship and said, I came naked and I will go naked. Another information is coming. Job is just doing the same because he worshiped God and he acknowledged God from the day one when the devil brought temptation. That is the reason why God was able to sustain Job. Now see. Despite the people, despite the job, because of the way job is, God did not leave job. Job gave, God gave job the grace and he was able to pass through the heat, to pass through the wind, to pass through the trial, to pass through the hotness. Why? Because he had God. So human being will reject you. This is Noah. Noah was not helped to, be, to build an, an ark with anybody. Why? Because people were very wicked. He could tell people that repent, God is coming. And people could just see Noah. And there was no one, it's being quoted in the Bible, even help Noah to carry a timber. Even his family member. This family member got the grace because of the covenant. The first covenant is whereby people were saving people with their first, the second, and the third generation. So you could get a grace because of your father. You could just get favor because of them. That one was the first covenant. Now you see. He's making a, a, a knack and nobody is helping Noah. But because he's doing the will of God, the will of God was sufficient. It took uh, uh, Noah so many years to build the ark, but the will of God was accomplished. You see, people were not there to help, to help Noah, but God was there to give Noah the grace. God was there to give Noah the strength. God was there to give Noah the patience. And Noah was able to build the ark with or without the, the help of people. And the will of God came to pass. So that's the reason why people will despise you if you do not do the will of God, it is good for you to do and move also with the will of God. Remember, this life in a, is a journey so that when you reach a place, you know this place I have to stop. You, you can see the journey of Abraham. That one gives us a very good illustration of the journey of our salvation. You can see also the journey of Jesus Christ. Remember there was one day Jesus Christ was young and he went to the temple and he really preached there to the temple until people were, were, were amused. When the parents found... Uh, 
Jesus, they were very annoyed because they used to get instruction from the Lord about what? About Jesus Christ. And they knew this one, God have not said about Jesus. Yes, he was, it, was, it was, but time has not yet come. Jesus disappeared from that day until when he was 30 years is when now he appeared. Because the time he appeared when he was young, yes, the grace of God was in him. The, the spirit of God was in him. The anointing of God was in him. The prophecy was in him and it has come to pass. But the appointed time of it to be revealed and to come out of the man had yet not had yet not had yet not come yet it was 12 years so there were some more years for to come so that the fulfillment of God shall come to pass there was around 18 years so Jesus went into silent for 18 years until 30 years that was an appointed time is when is when is when he came. I remember very, very well. I remember very well. This one was a prophecy that God gave me eight years ago when I was born again. That year, when I was born again, I, I, I did not go to any church, but I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. And the power of self-examination fell on me. And I just felt that this life is not right. I just have to change. And Mike, you know, the following day when I woke up, the whole week I was just disturbed. The following day when I was up on Sunday, I went to a church. And that church, I remember, it started. When this church started, there was a club behind the church. This church started and these people were under the tree. And I really laughed at them when I saw them praying. So in that, in that, in that, in the opposite side, there used to be a, a club. And I was a member because it was next to my home. So that is the place I used to go to remove the lock. Eh? That is the day I used to remove the lock on, on Sunday. So on Sunday I wake up, I go and remove the lock so that I go and relax. I take at least like one bottle or two and then I go home and relax. So that day when I wanted to take a lock, that, that club has already changed to be a church. A church was there, it is written, New Jerusalem, and it's serving a signpost. And I wonder, and people were singing. I get annoyed. Then when I'm looking on the other side, I'm seeing people praying under the tree. I started saying, people are saying, Lord, Lord. And some of them, oh, these ones are praying under the tree. And I never knew, that, that was now three years later. After three years, I never knew that I was going to come to that church. So after one month, again, I passed that way. I saw those people who are praying under the tree. They have put a, a, an emma. They have looked for a tandarua. They have put a tandarua. Then I said, hey, thank you, God. You have been blessing these people. Hey, at least you have removed them under the tree. The other time it was drizzling and I was seeing them under the tree. God, you are good. I never knew that those people who were praying under the tree, they were praying for my soul and they were calling me through prayer. And then it passed again. One day I passed there. I found that now they have constructed an iron sheet church. Mm, I've said, God, anyway, from one glory to another glory, you have been helping this church. Now, that day now, the, that week which I was very much convicted, convinced that I really have to change my life. Now things are becoming worse. And if I don't change my life, more bad things will happen to me. I just felt sorry to myself. I just felt that I really want Jesus. I am longing to have this Jesus. This Jesus of Sunday school. This Jesus of my early childhood. I really need Jesus. So I went to that church. Then when I went to that church, I, it was funny. The floor was all... Tiles. I say, why? Now, in my heart, I was very happy. Then I just stayed there, just praying. And you know, it was a prophet church. So I was holding my hands like this and saying, God, don't, don't bring a prophecy about my life, please. If you say anything about me, I will never come back again here because my life is dirty. My life is not good. So I was really praying for prophecy not to come. But I was enjoying listening for other people, but not mine. And the time for prayers come. So I started the journey. So towards the end of that year, when I was in a certain fellowship, then God gave me a revelation or a, pro, or a word about myself. He told me there is something of God inside you and you will preach and you will be an international preacher. And so many things he said, you will be an, an international preacher. I will bless you. You will be the head in your family and so many things. So... Uh, what happened is that I laughed. You know, I laughed. I laughed. I laughed when I, I went to the house. And I said, surely, these Christians sometimes, they can say things which they don't know. How can I be an international preacher? How will it happen? Even just opening the Bible. I don't have even the Bible in my house. I really laughed. When I was just recalling those things, I really laughed. And then these people were filled by the Holy Spirit. They were talking until they are falling down. They are falling down. They are being woken up. They are being given microphone. To me, it was fun. I never knew that that thing could also happen to me. 
it was fun. I just saw that it was a drama. I was just smiling. If you could see, I look at me. People are praying. Me, I'm smiling. I'm looking at people. I'm seeing the people. People are praying. People are being given microphone. They say, I, say, but what? I am laughing. I went home. I laughed to the fullest. Little did I know that the way these people are behaving, it is going to come to me. And it's going to come to me with also a revenge part of it. But I thank God. So you see, God told me, wait. It's appointed time shall come. It's appointed time shall come. And I was in a different nation. So when I was coming to, to when I was now coming back home, God was speaking to me and he's telling me, your blessing is not here. You are in a wrong place. Now I brought you here. You have, you have, you have received salvation. Now go back home is where I'm going to bless you. Now how is God going to bless me? How can I leave the things that I've invested here? I was just running mad. I was regretting why I got born again. If this was salvation, I wish I knew salvation could have just distracted my life. I could have not been born again. So I started regretting and I started crying and saying, why did I go to salvation? I cried and I lamented like seven days. And I said, now how can I just leave the things that I've invested and then I just go and then I'm going to be blessed. That is it. I'm trying to reason logically, but I'm not seeing any logic in it. Then one day this is what happened. I said, because I've decided now to be born again, I just have to listen to God. Now I say God anyway, and that is when now things started becoming bad, worse, and God makes sure that the environment was not even conducive for me. I started getting annoyed of that environment. I just found myself leaving everything and escaping with my children. And that's how I came back home. But I could cry a lot, remembering good things that I left, good house that I left, good furniture that I left, good things that I left, good, good, good things that I left, good title that I left, good work everything ah it was just amazing but i cried and cried a lot and towards the end of the day i just told myself now i've come now what am i going to do i just i just have to just obey god because i don't have anything again and i obeyed god and i obeyed god and god also revealed to me he revealed to me he revealed to me this place but i could not know that it was this place but he revealed to me very well and he told me exactly whom I'm going to meet with. But when I, I came, I did not come here immediately. I went somewhere else and I asked God, so you show me a woman. And how comes that I'm going to, uh, to a place where there's a man? What is not happening? When I came, you show me, you show me a woman. You show me we are starting uh, a church. Angels are surrounding us. Now I'm coming. I'm finding myself in a, in a place where there's a man. And he told me, I want you, first of all, to stay here. And he specified for me the years. And those years exactly came to pass without me knowing. But one day when I was sitting down and remembering the promises of God, and I was lamenting and telling God, you are a liar. You have not even fulfilled what you told me. Is when I remember I have written it down. Down. The years I've written it down and where I am, I cried and I worshipped God. And I said, God, you are not a liar. Many a times when you tell us things, the way we want it to come out is not the way we, 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 it will come to be. Then he told me, you have a lot of wound. So I don't want to take you there to a lot of wound. There you are going to a midwife. How can you go to a midwife and you have a lot of wound? You have to be done for surgery so that these wounds can come out because I cannot work with you with a lot of wounds like this and you cannot serve me with a lot of wounds like this. Now stay here for you to be, to be, to be done for surgery. So he told me the servant of God is going to be a surgeon to me. He's going to do for me surgery. And, they, and he was really having the grace of the word of God and also he was having the grace of a pastor. So he pastored me he helped me until I recovered because I was so bitter. I was so bitter. I was so arrogant. At place of work, nobody could touch me. They knew if they, you just mentioned anything, I was so defensive. And the way I have a voice like a microphone, I could shout. I could yell. So many people said, ah, this one is having a lot of stress. Let us just leave. Let us just leave her. So people just leave me like that. But I stayed and God just was there for me. Uh, hair bandaging, wooding, many things, many things, many things. People could tell me, why can't you uh, climb uh, the, the, the altar and worship? I said, no, I could not feel like. I went like that until when I was totally healed. And then 
One day I just found myself in the present worship team. That day the worshippers, all of them, I don't know where they have gone, all of them, that Sunday they did not come. And there was one Gandan lady who was worshipping and he doesn't know Kiswahili songs. Maybe when you worship in English, people are not responding. I just found myself going to the altar and I started worshipping. That is how I found myself now worshipping there. But I thank God. There I was in hospitality in the kitchen, washing sufuria. People do not like worshipping, worshipping. Uh, uh, washing sufurias and utensils, they like cooking. They cooking, ah, cooking people will be many. Time for cooking, ah, people will come. Time for washing utensils, bye, see you. So that is the work I used to do. And I thank God I stayed there until I heard the voice of the Lord now telling me, now you are healed. Now you are healed, you can go where I promised you to go. I told the servant of God, by the way, I did not know what I'm coming to do. Actually, I did not know. I did not know even who I am. I did not know even what I can do. I did not know anything. What I decided to do is just to obey God because after all, I don't have anything left with me apart from God. There's nothing I can hold on or there's nothing I can brag with or there's nothing I can use but God. So I came he allowed me and he, we pray and he, the spirit uh, confirmed that it is true and that is the reason, that is how I came. So I came exactly the years that God has already calculated for me. He calculated for me five years and those five years exactly I stayed there and I, and I did not even remember, even it was not in my mind. That one is the promise God has promised me that God has fulfilled. That one justified to me, God will fulfill others. So go with the will of God. People will not despise you because when you go with the will of God, there is a certain favor that no one can shut it down. There is a certain grace that God is going to release because you are walking with him. It is good working with God. When it was time for Abraham to break the camp, he could break the camp. And once he got to a certain place, there was just blessing. You see, when Joseph went to Egypt, it was according to the will of God. He went to Egypt at appointed time. Despite the fact even the Potiphar wanted to distract um, uh, Joseph or to oppress Joseph, he could not do it. Even when Joseph went to the prison, in fact in the prison is where God of Joseph was revealed, is where God of Joseph was seen, is where God of Joseph was manifested. And at that particular moment, when, uh, when God, God gave out the dream and Joseph was able to interpret the dream and the dream came to pass. When the dream came to pass is what God told Abraham about his descendants coming to Egypt came to pass. Until when Moses was born again is what God promised Abraham about delivering the, his, his fourth generation from Egypt to Canaan came to pass. So it is the will of God. The will of God have certain grace that you cannot, even you as an individual, however much stubborn you are, the stubbornness will disappear. God will deal with that stubbornness, whether you like it or not, so long as you are not disobedient. Disobedience is what will take you far away with God. God hates rebellions. The sin of rebellion Rebellion is same as witchcraft. The sin of rebellion is very, very bad. If you are rebellion to God, you and the witchcraft, you are equal. If you are rebellion to God, you, you and the devil worshiper, you are equal. If you are rebellion to God, you are you and diviners, you are equal. God really doesn't like uh, uh, rebellion. So when you obey the will of God and when you do the will of God, people will not despise you. But when you don't do the will of God, when you don't obey the will of God, there will no grace. There will be no light. You will not arise and shine because for the glory of God is not there. But arise and shine. Why? For the glory of God is there. So when the glory of God is there, is the will of God. May God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Be blessed. And I thank God because of you. Just let us utter the word, a word of prayer for two minutes and it shall be a blessing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory and honor. Father, we worship you because of your word in Malachi chapter 2 verse 9 that says that you, you, uh, uh, you are going to turn away from us because you have turned away from you and you are not obeying your word. And even the priests, when they teach, they don't treat others alike. There are some things that favors them, they don't rebuke. There are some things that give them joy, they don't rebuke. So, Father, you have come and you are saying that we have to change our ways. Father, people are crying because of favor. But you are saying that favor is not coming their way. It's because they have not obeyed your will. God, we pray that you may obey, we may obey your will. Because the Holy Spirit, you have said that this is the time that you have 
or the willingness of our purpose, that whatever we will do with the willingness of our purpose, and one purpose and one accord is to uplift you, Jesus Christ. It is time for us to uplift you. It is time for us to uplift you. When the devil was uplifting you on the cross, the devil knew that you are over, but the devil did not know that. He's uplifting you high above even the cross. We thank you and we uplift your holy name. It is time for you to be uplifted. It is time for you to be uplifted. It is time for the cross to be uplifted. Oh my Lord, my God, my Redeemer, we glorify you and we uplift your holy name. Forgive us, oh my Father, where we did not do your will. And you are saying that rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. We are witchcraft. We are sorcerers. We are devil worshippers because we did not obey your word. Father, right now we repent and we say that may you give us the grace and the strength so that we may obey your word, so that we may also obey your will, so that we may let you, Jesus, to be the, the lamp of our feet. We narrate it, but we have, not, we have not let it be impractical, so that you may guide us and you may direct us. Oh God, we worship you and we glorify your holy name. Father, we are now going to do your will. It doesn't matter what the economy say. It doesn't matter what the environment say. It doesn't matter what the church say. It doesn't matter what, what is being said anywhere, but what we should do. It's what you are saying for us. And you are saying that those people who know their Lord, they shall do exploit. It's those people who are doing your will. It's those people who obey your will. Those are the people who know the Lord. They know the will of the Lord. They know how to walk with the ways of the Lord. They know how to obey the will of the Lord. They do the will of the Lord. We are not going to reject us like Samuel. You are not going to reject us and take away the promises that you have given us. Even if when we shall be in the promises in disobedience, my Father, we shall not be enjoying it, but it shall turn to be bitter and it shall turn to be a thorn. But Father, if you obey and we do your will, the promise that you have given us, we shall enjoy it and it your will will be done in those promises at, on earth as is it in heaven. May you be uplifted, exalted in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Shalom, shalom. Judith Ogege. Bye-bye. Till next time. God bless you.